Shift or land, shift or land, shift or land. A journey into the art and friends of Nick Shiflet, otherwise known as the Shifter. Traveling from the everyday to a little insane. Shifter land, shifter land. This is uh, Cooking Kitty, episode number three, volume number three, version number three, uh, whatever kind of number three you want to think about. Today we're going to be doing um, uh, silk screening. We're going to uh, do a photo emotion silk screening, which is the way I learned how to do it. There's other ways you can do it, but that's what we're going to be doing. So basically, you got you got uh, three main things. You got you got to have three things. The three main things you need for to to to, to do your uh, silk screen to make your art. You got to have your art, whatever it's going to be. You got to have your art. You gotta have your art, and uh, well, I'll explain what this is all about a little later. Number two, you need to have your uh, little photo emotion kit, and uh, yeah, you can get that at the store. I uh, this is an awesome uh, brand. I've been using it for about 10, 15 years, and um, yeah, Speedball works great. Works great. Fifteen dollars makes you make you a lot of shirts. And then your third thing, your main third thing you need is uh, your screen. And I could talk about that. I built this screen. You can go and buy some, uh, but uh, I make my own. You know, it's not perfect. And uh, well, nothing I do is perfect, really. But you know, it's, uh, I get everything. I get everything done that I need to get done. So those, those are the three things you need. You're gonna are the three main things. Another thing you're gonna need is a uh, squeegee. So this is just this one squeegee here. I've been using this for quite a while. Actually, this is the only squeegee I've ever owned. So I got that squeegee. You know, I was at a I was at a party last night, and. Uh, there are some dogs there, and they're they're pretty friendly. There was um, four dogs there. One dog was called Smudge. It's a little whippet. He uh, he really in, uh, enjoyed eating cheese off of me. I gave him some cheese. He liked cheese. And uh, there is a tiny little dog about this big. I don't know, Chihuahua style, little bat ears. I think that was called. Uh, his name was Cookie. Is that right, Cookie? Mm-hmm. And uh, then there's another one. Oh God, I can't remember what that one looked like. But his name was Coco. Coco is cute. They're all cute. These little okay. dogs. They played with me. We danced. I danced with the dogs. It was great. They're they're really they're really nice. Yes, oh, this is salad much. here. This is salad. She's uh she's one of my uh, cooking kitty moms that take care of me. This is salad, and uh, she's yeah she's she's one of my little kitty moms that likes to take care of me and feeds me when it times the trouble, when your nation's under attack. She helps take care of me. Gives me, gives me all the, everything I need, nourishment, love, attention, ear scratches, takes care of my fleas. Anyway, what, why was the dancing so incredible? Well, yeah, I just, I can't, I don't have a visual. Well, you know, when you get people going like this, like, I don't know, it's like, it's like there's something, 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 well, man, it's almost like I do yoga, but. I can't even do it. I can't, I'm a kitty cat. I don't know how these humans even do it, but they're doing all this dancing, they're shimmering in their shoulders and their hips and their legs, but it was, it was a lot more sexier than I'm doing it. I know, this is, I mean, yeah. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on like that. A lot of hip ass shaking. It's, uh, it was really sexy. I was, I was kind of actually kind of turned on. I was kind of, I was kind of actually embarrassed a little bit because I just, I don't know, felt a little voyeuristic. Yeah. Were you a little creepy? Perving out? <laughs> I like perving out. I'm a kitty, I'm a dirty kitty. I'm a dirty kitty. Well, here, I'll start with your artwork. Here, 
you got your artwork. You got to get a. You got to get your artwork. I do. I just do positive, negative, positive, negative, uh, positive, negative. Uh, that means uh, I know on, off. No, not like a picture. Not where there's a, there's like, like, like a graduation of grays. If you're talking about a black and white photo, see, just like black and white, positive, negative. So you got to go and get your art on transparency somehow. I do it at the photocop store, and that's you know you don't get a really opaque black. Opaque is where no light shines through. You got to get a black. You need a, a really 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 dense amount of black on your artwork because you're going to be shining some light on here. And this is what's going to make the screen, and uh, it'll make a little sense a little later. But so what I do is I go I go to the coffee shop and uh, and uh, I get a transparency. I I get two made, so I double them up like that. And uh, then I take a, a magic marker and uh, I make them darker because I you got to have an absolute black. It's got to be opaque. It can't be transparent. It's got to be opaque. Transparency is not going to work. If it's transparent, light's going to shine through here and it's going to screw up your screen. You're not going to get a poor image. We want a nice. We want a really nice, nice sharp, uh, clean image. So uh, yeah, that's your art and uh, that's what we're doing there. And then the emulsions it comes in two parts. We got we got sensitizer, sensitizer part. I don't know part A or part B, whatever you want to call it. You got your photo emulsion. That's, I think that's the hardener. This is like some kind of hardener thing. And this right here, this is the stuff that's uh, sensitive to light. This is going to react. React. This will react to the light that we are going to shine on it a little later. But we're going to mix these two. Once we mix those two, I'm not going to do it now because once we mix it, things are going to go really fast. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to mix those two things up and, uh, you want to have a dark space. I've, uh, I blocked out the windows cause, uh, after you get this stuff, see, it's kind of screwy cause, uh, um, we need this light here for filming, but ideally you'd want to do this in super, super low light conditions. I mean, this might not even work. It might be too bright. Um, this is our screen. Like I was saying a moment ago, this is our screen and, uh, you can go and get uh, I made this, you know, if you got the ability to make this, it's kind of a good way to go. Because uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to pay someone else to do that labor. Like uh, those capitalists, what was that? Somebody today just said something about capital. I, I, I don't know if I can repeat it, it's dirty. But something about capital reaming in the rear end or something. I don't know, capitalists. Anyway, so you can go and buy this at any kind of art store. It's, gonna be, it's all about getting a clean image. Very nice clean image. Although... I do everything very manually, so if I screw it up, you know, I just I just go with it. I don't really care. Salin, do you got any questions? What do you? Hear? Yeah, or should I just? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll just. You got any questions? You're pretty. Thing? You're pretty thorough so far. I think. You're gonna have, we're gonna mix this stuff up, and then once we mix it up, it becomes photosensitive. Photosensitive means that. It's uh, sensitive to light and, and can be damaged like 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 humans humans poor little suckers when they go outside they gotta slather all this like cream just disgusting milky white cream all over their skin because the sun's gonna damage it and in a way we are gonna apply light to this photosensitive stuff and damage it we're gonna damage it it's, we're gonna do exactly what the sun does to humans but uh, it's this damage is gonna have a positive outcome. I guess I could just mix you two guys up and, uh, and, uh, and you know, apply it to the screen. And then let her dry. We're going to have to take a little time out. Maybe we'll take a little vacation because that's going to take about, depending on the humidity and the heat, that's going to take uh, anywhere from, I don't know, 25 minutes to 45 minutes to dry. And then, and then we'll come back and finish her up. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe I could show you. I'm working on another thing. Could you come a little closer maybe? And just, um, I've been, there's another little side project I've been working on. This is, uh, I was doing some hiking a couple years ago out on the Olympic Peninsula. It's like the most north western part of the continental United States. Something like that. Anyway, it's in Washington at the ocean. I was hiking and I found this little sucker on the beach. And uh, it's like a little harbor seal. I, you know, I tried to identify it. It's like a it's little seal skull. And uh, it was a little stinky, but I wrapped her up in some plastic and brought her home and then what I did, instead of like most people probably put it in bleach, what I did is I, uh, I put it in a vinegar solution, apple vinegar or something like that, slightly acidic, 3-5% acidity. Uh, uh, so yeah, 
pH balance is very important to a kitty cat. I gotta. It's very important. That's. I mean, that's a whole other issue. Do so think, anyway, what's that? Do you think Salad. It's, do, you, do, you well, do you think it's uh, prehistoric? Do you think it's prehistoric? I think it came from a, a whole other universe. I don't. I mean, I, that's like I don't know how to even combine like another universe and then prehistoric. It's just. It's like it creates a schism of like schizophrenia in my brain. On this side, like thinking one thing and then this side think something else I don't I don't know what to do and so I get I get like a brain lock like so what I'm doing here is uh, here's another this is a cool little tool can you see that is that can you see that this is called a micrometer it's my it's for measuring precise engineering very 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 precise measurement so what I've been doing is I've been down here you know Halloween's uh, Halloween's like like in about 10 days not uh, six days and uh, I've been working on a costume I'm based on my costume on this head right here so I've been taking measurements like, you know, you just get in there. See, this tool is so beautiful. One of my friends gave it to me when I used to, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is like, that's, let me see, what do we got here? We got two, oh, I, I don't know how to read this very well. But anyway, so I've just been taking measurements because I'm going to base my costume on this little guy right here. So that's another side project uh, that I want to share with you. This thing's really actually pretty important to me. I don't know, it's, uh, it's been with me for, I don't know, five six years and uh i was out hiking you know why are you measuring it well i'm measuring it so i could make a uh make a model to wear i'm gonna wear i'm gonna how and this is gonna be this is gonna be like my head how will how will that um uh fit on your head oh no that well i'm taking measurements so i can get all the ratios right oh okay ratios Dimensions. gin and tonic ratios ratios of the photosensitizer it's all about that by the way is a four to one ratio gin and tonic uh well i don't want to bore you um and this, well, this, this is all, I mean, it's not really ratios, it's proportion. So that when I get the, when I get, uh, I'm going to make a mold and then I'm going to pour some uh, polymer and I don't know, some other things that you got to mix together too. Let's mix these, yeah, let's, let's, we're going to mix these guys up. The sensitizer, the stuff that's sensitive to light. And this guy's like, you know, the hardener, the stiffener, that's like glue that's been dyed blue. Oh, that's right. So this is, like I say, this is a four to one ratio. Meow, meow. Four. To one. Four to one. So you did that's like four of these guys and then put one of these in. That's a ratio. Four to one. So well this So it's like this is so easy. I mean, you know, it's like you you first few times I did this I did screw it up. But uh um it's, how, it's, how did you manage that cooking kitty? Anyway, four to one, four to one ratio, you just... Now, does it matter the amount? Well, the amount, the amount, see, uh, I've just, through like... trial and error, uh, I know that I need, the, like, the volume of four of these, basically, is going to be enough to cover that. Like, if you were doing a bigger screen, mm -hmm. like... You could do, like, one cup of, oh, of yeah. that, oh, yeah, and yeah, three yeah, cups yeah. of that. Yeah. But you're getting your head of self. If you made uh, if you what? made a screen that big, it, that'd be like America gone hog wild. You want everything to be bigger than it really needs to be because you're not gonna. It's not, not going to work. All right. Probably what's happening here is that I've forgotten. What happens often? Sometimes I forget how many times, how many things I put in there. Ah. So right now we're we got we can just relax. We could you could do whatever you want to do. You want to sit down and watch baseball, or if you want to you know if you like you know like to mix drink and gin and tonics. But once we add this. You have to start moving a little bit at a rapider pace because it becomes sensitive to light. I'm going to stir my solution with that kneel. That's what that's for. I uh, failed to prep. You know, I don't have any assistants. I work alone all the Well, I have a few assistants. I'm helping. Like Salad. Salad, my assistant, my cookie mom, and my, uh, my cinematographer. Is that what you call it? That's such a dumbass thing. The person filming me is, that's Adrian. Adrian Stacy. Adrian yeah. is cinematographer. She's my, she's my, uh, all right. So you just, look at this. It's blue. Here, here. Can you see it? how it's, uh, it's blue. It's tie-dye. And then, well, see, you got to stir it up. See, this thing is blue. This, this liquid is green. Here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, there you go. See? Uh, can you, can you get, are you, see there? It's, it's, you got two colors, and one's a yellow, and one's a blue. So you got to stir that up until you get a uniform color. 
Is it always that beautiful green color? Oh yeah, yeah, uh-huh. That mm -hmm. might be my favorite color. What color would you call that, Sally? Um... You smell kind of nice. You, you know, I wish I could smell that nice. It's just that, you know, I spend a lot of times outdoors rubbing in the dirt. Maybe you should um, uh, roll around in the floral, floral beds. Floral beds? Mm -hmm. I would say that color is um, mint to seafoam green. I think it's seafoam puke. I call it seafoam puke. Yeah, kind All of right, a dusty so, green. Oh, okay, so this guy's pretty much at the right, pretty much at the right, uh, right consistency. All right, it's all mixed up. So what we do is, uh, this is what you use your two sticks for. See, if I would have had these sticks last night, I could have danced. I could have danced those other people off the effing dance floor. But no, I didn't. I didn't have these sticks. So anyway, these. These guys, you want to keep this guy raised off the floor. Because what we're going to do is we're going to spread uh, our, our, this stuff is now sensitive to light. You know, I mean, it's not like photographic. It's not going to instantly turn. It's not going to like, but yeah, over time, you know, half hour, or hour, it's going to, it's going to get stiff. It's going to start thickening up, hardening up, and then it's going to become unworkable. You won't spread it around. You want to have it, uh, you want to have it be all liquid. Otherwise, you won't be able to spread it around. So, and you want to keep this guy raised off the floor because we're going to, we're gonna apply uh, our, uh, our photosensitive material to both sides, get a nice even thing. So, what's well, so what we do is you just gotta oh, pour yourself a nice little, nice little line. Oh, there. Pour yourself a nice little line around here, just like this. And you know, let me see. So you can gauge uh, how much you need to do by the size of your art. Like, you know, if your artwork covered this whole screen. You'd have to, you know, make sure that you uh, got this everywhere. So you just, you just do that, and you just, just gently, nice and spread her out. And you want to get a nice field uh, that's gonna, you know, be larger than your artwork. So you just, yeah, you keep on, keep on applying this. Keep, would you say you keep on keeping on? Um, well, you know, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. That's not, I mean, that's not how I talk. Oh, okay. But, um, you know, I think it's an accurate statement. Keep on keeping on. That's what you do. Do you need me to hold that stick right there? Oh, no, no. It's, uh, no. It okay. is being a little bit uncooperative. It has a mind of its own. I don't know. It's dead, though. It used to be alive. It used to be a tree that grew. Oh, see? Yeah. Keep, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. See, this, 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 this one seems a little thick for some reason. I might have, I might have mixed her, mixed her up a little bit, too. Two, maybe I got my ratio wrong. So, anyway, as you can see, I'm just slowly trying to get a nice, like I usually just work with the rectangle. I just try to get a nice little rectangle, and I just, oh yeah, see this? Okay, yeah, just, just keep on, keep, yeah, exactly, keep on keeping on. <laughs> just keep on working it in there, and then just, see so what we're going to do is you just, once you get, once you're satisfied that you got enough coverage, well, I'll show you what we're going to do. Maybe, maybe the, uh, I've had this mixture for a long time, maybe it's hardened up a little bit, you know, maybe it's oxidized a little bit, but there's a whole nother oxidization, there's a whole nother, I'm just fascinated by science, oxidization is where the molecules of the substance, um, uh, what is it, I don't know, deteriorate, they well yeah, they deteriorate, yeah, it's like rust, rust is a form of like, a, a, a very uh, classic, classic case of oxidization, so, I don't know, maybe I've had a little, Oxidization, so this because this seems a little firmer than normal. Generally, what I do is I just get her nice and flat, and then you wipe some of that back in there just in case you know you need it for a little later use. So, so you just keep on, keep on, keep on working it like that. What's this happening here is we're getting a nice, we're getting a nice. Uh, I wish, man, I wish we could have a, if we had a microscope or something, I could show you. This, we're getting all this liquid in here into the screen, just nicely immersed, just really. So then, what you do is you just, I just, at some point, I just start wiping this clean, because you don't want a whole bunch of stuff on there. See, that looks really good. That looks pretty flat. And there's some hairs on there. Look at that guy. I don't care about that hair. My artwork's gonna be right here. That hair, I, I could give a, 
I could give a, a, a little tasty rat's ass about that, 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 uh, that hair. Look, I could really, really, yeah, it's not in my way. I could really care, I could really care less. Whoa. So anyway, normally, see, I gotta do more of these, but I think, I think that's gonna do, I think that's gonna do it. That's just, there, this is gonna, we're gonna have to let, just, I'm gonna put a little more on, I'm just a little paranoid. I always get, a lot of times, I second guess myself. Don't ever do that, because then it just leads you down a path of, like, denial, floss, thin, sin. God, man, I need to, I need to go to speech therapy class. I have a hard time communicating with humans sometimes. Maybe that's why I'm so fixated with aliens and them sucking my brains out, because I could communicate them better. Like, they understand when I go, meow, 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 meow. You know, those dumb humans go, what does that little cat want? It's like, I mean, if I jump up on their lap, they know what I want, but when I go, meow, 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 it's like, aliens go, okay, yeah, let's go get that. Let's get her done. But, yeah, okay, man, I just, okay, we're just going to have to pray that I'm doing this right today, because, but, I mean, I'm, I'm teaching you the technique, and you can practice and learn yourself at home, and, you know, there's no better way to learn than making a mistake. We're, I'm going to call this guy done. See, what, here. What about this little drop right here? Oh, that, well, see, that's kind of, see, this is, that's out of our, you know, that's out of our zone. Look oh. at this guy. But, yeah, it would be a cleaner. See, look at that. It's going to fit right there. It's going to uh -huh. be great. It's going to work out so awesome. If I did my Rachel's right, we're going to be, I'll just clean it out. Just for you, Salad, I'm going to get rid of that. Thanks, Oh, I like that. Yeah, see. Meow, meow. See. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. See. That's like a little kitty. That's a little kitty, just like that. Okay, well, all right. I gotta stop scooting around because I'm just gonna screw this up. Oh boy, man. Oh, now, see, there's a hair that's right in the middle. You wouldn't want that there. In the end, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, really even matter. So it's just not. I mean. It's continuing our process we have applied our photo emulsion to our screen and it's been drying approximately one hour with a fan on it and we it's dark in here so we're gonna we're gonna open this up and check it out and there's a few things that you can determine if it is um, if it's dried or not and then you gotta wait a little while for the process to unfold like a pussy cat I don't know a whole lot I don't know I don't this pussy cat doesn't know nothing I don't know anything this pussy cat doesn't know anything at all whatsoever that's why I like it out in the woods. It's easy. We're going to go in here and we're going to check out. Shh, we're going to see if our photo motion has dried to a nice surface. And there's going to be clues. I'll show you some of the clues if it's not dry. Come on. Oh, it's dark in here. If you can see, this color, color, you know, I'm a color master. I know a lot about color because I got a college degree in color. And I know all about primary colors secondary colors if you ask me about the tertiary I'll say go do your own research so we got we can tell see I don't know can you see that from over there I don't know but you've got this one color this is dry that's dry this is oh wait, this is no it's just that's where it's a little thick we're good okay there's a wet spot see if it looked like that oh yeah see gooey that's like it's like a gooey duck those people from the Northwest you guys know about gooey ducks don't you so it's a little gooey so we're all set here uh, Let's, uh, yeah, we're all set. We're gonna, we're gonna proceed. We're gonna proceed with the, uh, exposure of the screen. Very, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. I know, if you can recall, I told you how we made our artwork earlier. And, uh, you wanna make sure this is, uh, super black. Dark, dark, dark. You can, this is like, we're on a budget. I'm on a budget. I got no funding. I got zero, well, I got a little bit, I got a little bit of funding. Just the other day, someone gave me $10 because they enjoyed my show. I was on the street and they go, man, Cooking Kitty, I love your show. Here's 10 bucks. It's like, man, that was so cool. I'm dyslexic. I'm a dyslexic <laughs> kitty cat. 
I'm a very dyslexic, and that's why you know I got a, a small learning disability. And sometimes I fill out some of my paperwork wrong because I get letters, and numbers mixed up. Anyway, it's always important. To, um, anyway, you want to have super solid black because you don't want. We're going to expose this on our screen. I'm a feeling that screen looks a little funky. I think I might have messed up. I don't know. It's just like I don't think I'm focused. Do you think you got the ratios wrong? I've could have got the ratios wrong. There's one, I'll tell you a ratio, uh, Sal, not to mention it. There is one ratio, one ratio that, I'll tell you, there's one, there's one ratio that I never get wrong is when I make a gin and tonic, there's plenty of gin in it. That's the one ratio I don't screw up. So anyway, you got a solid black. We don't want no light to go through that because that's going to expose the screen. The light, the light is going to harden everything. Hard, thin. It's going to make it hard. And then, so, uh, the light's going to, it's going to shine through here. It's going to, Harden all the emulsion because it's sensitive to light, and but all the light shining through here, well, it won't shine through here. That's the definition of opaque. Light can't go through it. This is transparent. This black area is opaque. So uh, we'll put that on there. We'll shine the light on there for about 45 minutes, half hour. This is what the pennies are for. We got we got two things for the pennies. Uh, the pennies. What I like to do with the pennies is I line up three or four pennies on the emulsion, and then I can test it. I can pick up a penny and see. Are we done yet? Like sometimes it doesn't take 45 minutes. Sometimes, for like some strange miraculous reason, mer miraculous, mer mer miraculous reason, uh, it only takes like a half hour, 25 minutes. But I just it's it's like a litmus test. I line these guys up and then I pick them up. I can tell if I've done it long enough or not. You got your piece of glass. You got your piece of glass. And uh, you wanna uh, you gotta see. I have a, you want to want to make sure that your glass is pretty clean. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You want to have this guy nice and clean because we're going to be shining light onto it. And we want a nice, remember earlier when I talked about that nice, crisp, clean image we're looking for? Well, this is going to help us out extremely. You just, you still want to keep this guy, oh yeah, uh, I forgot. I didn't even tell you guys about this. Can you guys see this? This is a piece of black paper. It's a little shinier than I'd like it to be, but it's all I got right now. I didn't have time to get to the store. You would like something not so reflective. You want something a little more matte, so it doesn't light doesn't bounce off and kick back. Look, that'll make us kind have of a, a satin finish. Hmm? Satin finish. Satin. Even even matter is in satin. Well, yeah. not M A D D E R, but M A T T E. -T -E. Matter. But not like physical particles. I don't speak proper English. So you want to put this under here to keep the, the light from reflecting, so you get a nice a nice crisp image. So you, so you just yeah you just go like that, and this guy's all dry. And so like right now we're gonna our light is gonna be 12 inches away. That's for a, 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 a 10 by 12 or a 11 by 14. But if your screen gets a little bigger, like Salad wanted to do a screen like as big as Texas, you know it's like you get a little bigger. You're gonna have to have your. You're gonna have to weigh more. We don't have a power enough of light to do a screen the size of Texas, but um, you know you get, they're called arc well lights. I don't know, but they're hugely bright. We'd have to be wearing eye protection like a nuclear bomb was going off. But um, so anyway, but because uh, we're just doing a 10 by uh, 10 by 8 or 8 by like that, 12 inches is what uh, the uh, the instructions say uh, on uh, for what we're gonna do. So we got a uh, 12 inches. I mean for 8 by 10, 8 by 10 inches. Whew, excuse me. So we got, uh, we got 12 inches here. I got a, the instructions call for a uh, 150 watt bulb. For a 150 watt bulb, and the size we are doing, um, 12 inches. So we got our black backing here. This guy's right here. And uh, we're gonna expose it. We're gonna expose it for 45 minutes. Oh, those pennies. I get these guys wet. What I do, I'm gonna line these pennies down here. I'll show you. I'm going to line these pennies down right here. This is, I made this, I thought of this myself. You know what? This is what I think about feng shui. Feng shui. But you know what I think about common sense? This is common sense. What you do is you take these pennies, you line them down here. And we're going to expose this. And then in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm going to pick up one of these pennies. I'm going to get this sucker wet. And I'm going to rub it in there and see if, uh, if it's dried or not. If, it's, if we exposed it long enough. Because if you go too long, the light will penetrate through the, the heat. The heat will harden everything. We won't have a screen, and we have failed. It won't work. It won't work. Just Cooking gonna... kitty. Cooking kitty. Yeah. Are the pennies gonna? Um, are the pennies going to develop as well? 
Yes, they are. But what? We'll show you later what we do with that. Okay. Um, afterwards, when this is done, there's these clear areas that don't have anything on it. So what we're going to do is I do two things. I do either I put some plastic tape on the bottom side all around the image so that no ink will go through here so I can mm. get ink anywhere. And, uh, and then that tape will also cover this area and any holes oh. that the pennies. We're just going to expose this. We're going to come and check it out in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, maybe a half hour, uh, maybe 15. And uh, you want to center it. You want to, you know, you got your light right here. And, and then you just center it. And uh, the glass is, uh, yeah, just keeps it all. That's right. I used to use this spotlight, like an outdoor spotlight. I think it had so much heat mm -hmm. that it actually cooked, cooked it. Sometimes I've made it so that that green stuff hardens everywhere. Hmm. Nothing happens. Because hmm. what's going to happen, if this works out right, what will happen is we'll come down here and I'll talk a little bit and then I'm going to grab it and we're going to bring it over to that, that utility. That's what you got. You want a little dark area. You want a little dark area to have your, your, your little piece of art working away. That light there is damaging the areas uh, where it can reach. It's killing them dead, and the part that are, are covered in black, our little design, our little design, the light is not going through that area. If you remember earlier, it's the opaque area. The opaque area is hiding the light, and uh, that area underneath is not being damaged. And uh, the part that's uh, not covered in black, the transparent areas, are uh, are being damaged by the light. And uh, we got that glass on there. We got the glass on there to uh, uh, you want to keep uh, your your art as flat as possible against the screen so you get a nice the whole image the whole I mean the idea is to do it as best as you can I mean if it's not perfect that's totally totally awesome but you get that glass on there it's gonna help you get a clean nice crisp image that's what that's what we're looking for a crisp image if we got to expose it in another 5 10 15 20 minutes or maybe it's done right now and so we're gonna find out we're gonna go in there and find out come on come. let's just give this a little swap okay all right no nope. oh yeah that guy yeah well Okay. All right. Oh yeah. See, can I don't know. get a little closer? Uh -huh. Get there. Oh, okay. Get a let's get see how that's clearing out. You know, we might be done. See, and then what I like to do, then what I like to do is I take, I take, I rub other other areas that aren't underneath the pennies. Oh, well, it's rubbing up a little bit. It's rubbing away a little bit. So, it's not quite hard enough yet. See, yeah. All right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna give this. We're gonna give this a little bit longer. We're gonna. I get. I, I'm guessing around. I'm gonna guess around 10 more minutes, maybe 10, 20, 10, 10, 10, 20 minutes. So we're gonna we're gonna come back and we're gonna check out this next penny and see what happens, you know. And eventually, if we've gone too far and we screwed up and ruined it, we're gonna take a penny off and we're gonna rub it away with our little wet cotton swab that we've been licking. And um, nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna be it's gonna be dried. It's gonna be damaged beyond control or beyond use. And uh, no ink's gonna get through that empty hole. The whole thing is about making a hole that ink, we're going to press it through, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we make this little hole and then we apply some ink and then we rub it through and that's the whole thing. You got an empty area and you rub some ink through it. It's about penetration. It's all about <laughs> penetration. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. When it comes to silk screening, it's about... All right, so we were going to come and check. Uh, we've been around 45 minutes and we were a little lax. We probably should have came and checked a little earlier, but we're going to check it now. I'm pretty sure we don't even need to little check it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna check it anyway just to show you guys what's going on here. This is uh, you want a bit of you know. You guys may say to yourself that you can't do this. You don't have the space to do it, but you can make the space. You could do it in your bathroom. You could do it in a closet. You know, you you could do it in your bedroom. You could do it in your bedroom and put uh, black plastic on your window. Black plastic. I am a. I've had some really strange relationships with black plastic. Like uh, like I mean, photographer. I need sometimes I need dark spaces. So I, so anyway, let's just, just, all right, see, oh yeah, that guy's clearing out, okay, look at that, yeah, it's doing all right, see, see, I could have been faked, because sometimes when, okay, see that wet part there, it looks like it might be coming through, but I think it's just because it's wet, I think we're just going to call her good, that guy's, see, that guy might be, looks a little overcooked, you don't want to overcook it, I don't know, it, it takes trial and error, sometimes I screw it up, and I got to, you know, it's like, I say, all right, got to spend a little more money. Got to start over from scratch. So, no. Those are... I got another thing that I, I want to show you that we're going to do with the pennies. 
Another thing was to pennies that I'll show you a little later that they uh, come in. You could use washers too. There's a, a thing that we can do a little later um, with the pennies. When you, uh, we're going to put the penny, we're going to wrap these pennies in some, uh, some tape. And when you print, you want to have, you want to have the uh, screen raised approximately a quarter or an eighth of an inch above uh, your paper or your t-shirt. Uh, so that uh, um, it'll just give you the cleanest, the cleanest image. You don't want the silk to be right on the image because it's going to leave a little ghosting, a little shadow. So if it's raised up a little bit, when you rub your squeegee at a uh, 45 degree angle, a similar angle like that, uh, it won't leave uh, any ghosting. You just use some hot water, some, you know, not super hot water, you know, you don't want to go too far. Sometimes you over tighten nuts or bolts and stuff. You don't want to use over hot water, just some warm water. You can kind of see where that lighter area is. We're going to take that over to the sink. That lighter area we're going to wash out. We're going to wash out with hot water hopefully. And it's going to leave us a little clean image. And then we're going to like smash some ink in there a little later and you know, create an image. So hopefully if you've done things right. Which in my old operation I used to have a hose that came out and just like sprayed it like a, like a hose. Kind of like kind of like this kind of shape but anyway since I don't have a hose see it's a little hot just a little tepid just a little more water so I just take my fingers and create a little bit of pressure like this What happens is, see, as you can see, this little A is clear. The water, you can tell that uh, the water has gotten through here. Here, I'll show you. See, if you can see, see the water coming through those letters there? It tells me that we have exposed our right. Later, when this dries, the ink's gonna go through that little area right there. This morning when I woke up, when I was out drinking last night, and then I did some dancing, and then I rode home on my bike, and I got an intense cramp in my, what's this thing right here called? Ram -ram. Uh, your... What is that salad? It's uh, not my hamstring. It's no, not my thigh. That's calf. your calf. Oh, my calf. Yeah, I got this intense. Every once in a while, I get these intense cramps in my calf. It's not enough water. Thinking, it's not enough water and not enough potassium. My mm -hmm. electrolytes are down, and uh, I got this. Sometimes I have such an intense cramp, I start hyperventilating. The pain is so intense that I have to hyperventilate. It lasts around a half a minute to a minute. Anyway. It looks like that we may have properly exposed this son of a gun. I'm a little happy about that. I haven't done this for a little while. Oh wait, we're getting close. Oh, see, D N A L R E T F I H S. That's shifter land in reverse, backwards. All we have to do is clean out this little H area and uh, this little S area. We're all done, and then we gotta let that guy dry. You feel this. Tell them, what, tell them how much that cost. This is <laughs> an expensive piece of, of garment material. You are not speaking kitty language. I do not understand a <laughs> word you're saying. Um, so there I don't, I don't, you can see, can you see how we've got these clear areas? Here, let's, let's do it. This is what it's going to look like. See those clear areas? Okay, yeah, there you go. See those clear areas there? We're gonna smash, oh, look at that little area. We gotta get some hot water in there. Look, see that little area? Oh no, that was just some water. See, those are, oh, see. See, it might not have been hard not enough, but it's gonna work. But anyway, those those areas are where we're gonna smash ink in a very, very violent way. We're gonna smash ink through there. Uh, and uh, But we gotta let this dry a little bit because we gotta cover these areas. You gotta cover these all areas because when you start slopping ink around, you know, ink might get over here and it might get in your shirt. It's gonna go through that area. This area is hardened. It's a hardened area, a slight sensitive area, light sensitive area that has been hardened and um yeah see there's those little areas our test areas that were so helpful to us and uh so yeah i think uh i'm just going to give it a quick little more rinse just to make sure just give her a final little rinse that little that little f area i wasn't quite oh see you don't want it to have it hot you don't want to have it too hot it might be a little violent you just want it to be a nice soft easy just clear it out clear that area out that's why i like to eat bananas bananas help me they keep me from getting cramps, and you know it really helps my digestion. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna have to let this dry for a little while. What we gotta do is uh, cover up these little areas here, 
with uh, you can use some sort of uh, liquid that seals the area. What I like to do sometimes is I'll just take some uh, packing tape. You know, like if we're moving, if you're moving a lot, I got to move a lot because there's a lot of predators. And so I'm always there's like, well, last night I met some dogs. Uh, they were friendly. They didn't. They act. I mean, they kind of actually licked me in certain areas. And I, well, I don't mean those areas. Just like right up here, and uh, like they're like yeah. And so anyway. They, uh, they are friendly, but I gotta move a lot because there's unfriendly animals out there, birds, uh, you know, large rats, large rats. Sometimes I can't take them and they take me and they take little chunks out of my body. But, uh, so yeah, we're gonna, we gotta cover these areas so no ink can go through it. And then, and then we're done. We're ready to like print our shirt. The problem that we're having here is that, uh, when you want to print your shirt, you want a nice backing. See, that's, that's what we call a backing. This is the backing. This is the backing right here. This is the backing. And so I've used cardboard in the past, but I find that sometimes the creases in the cardboard will create a crease in your print when you want to do a print. So you want something super flat. You know, my friend Salad today, uh -huh. or no, it was yesterday, she, uh, it took her at least an hour to explain um, daylight saving light time to me. And you know what? I'm still a little fuzzy. I don't, I mean, it's going to happen in a week, and I'll find out. I'll find out what happens. I mean, like from experience. But when someone wasn't explaining it to me, oh God. See, normally if I would have had enough time, I would have rounded my corners right here. You got round corners. Cardboard is a little softer, but this is a little like, this is like wood paneling. It's creating a certain amount of resistance. It's, it's called friction. Another one of my favorite things, friction, surface tension. That's what the whole world is about. Physically, mentally, spiritually, um, economically. Uh, don't forget about religion, you know, and I am a Catholic. Don't forget about that. You may not believe that, but I am a Catholic. And so, anyway, I got this guy all together after a little bit of difficulty. And we're going to print our three shirts right now. We got our, uh, we got three shirts. So what I did is, uh, what we got here is, um, you got two things. You could put some photo resist, and you, you paint it on, and it's this liquid. You paint it on on your areas where you don't want the ink to go through, where we didn't get covered, like these areas. But I just put some just tape down and it works great. It take an hour or so for that other stuff to dry and uh, seeing as that we're, you know, we're like the studio. You know how much pressure they put on me? They don't. It's like, I gotta get this done. I gotta move on. I gotta move on to the next thing. It's like, they don't got time for me to let my ink dry. And then, remember those pennies earlier? When you, I was talking about, you wanna have this raised up a little bit. See that little space right there? That's two pennies, two pennies. And what you wanna do is like go like that. You put that on there right there, you put them on four corners, and then so that's gonna raise up. That's gonna it's gonna raise that up approximately an eighth of an inch off uh, your printing surface, be it paper or textile. I, knew. I just get her done. That's like I just get her totally done. That's what I do. I try to get stuff done. I don't I don't dismiss I don't I don't get too concerned. I know some people who think about stuff so much they don't ever leave their couch. They just sit there thinking, 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 thinking. But, you know, I try to do, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking, actually, but I also, I spend, I don't know what the ratio is, speaking ratios, but I spend a certain amount of time thinking about stuff, and I spend a certain amount of time doing stuff. Textile ink, screen printing, textile ink, this stuff works awesome. I've had worked, lasted a long time. It's, uh, you, uh, you put that on your, uh, you, we're going to smash this through these little openings right here. We're going to smash it uh, right through there. And uh, we're gonna smash that through there. And then when it dries, after it dries, we don't have time to show you that right now, you iron it on the opposite side, you flip the shirt inside out, and you iron it for two minutes, and that shirt's gonna last forever. I've had shirts that I printed in this super rudimentary manner. I've had shirts last 10 years. I've had the ink last longer than the shirt. The shirt falls apart, the ink is still strong. Okay, so when I'm printing, I usually like to leave a little thing around here when I go in between prints that I can set her down just like that, and so that it's not touching anything on the ground. Well, just a little helpful hint. This is uh, this is another shirt that I recently made for a bicycle gang. We have to call the skins. I like to bike around, and uh, sometimes we don't wear our shirts. Anyway, this is a, that was a test. This is called a flood stroke, and they call it the flood stroke. You guys all know what a flood is. It's like where water goes where it's not supposed to go. So this is called a flood stroke. So what you do is you want to get some ink. Like you got if, if we had a microcosm, you got that top part area, and underneath the top area, you have your uh, your nylon your your screen. So we want to get some ink on that screen before, you know, before you make your actual print. So we're just going to, it's called a flood stroke. I don't know, it's kind of technical, but, so, okay. So you just, you just want to get a, just, you don't need a lot of ink in this first step. 
this little first step. You just what we're doing, we're just going to fill up the screen a little bit so it has uh, a little bit of ink in it. We're just going to do a quick little print here, and uh, it's not going to be a the first one's not going to be perfect because your your screen's naked. It hasn't been uh, it hasn't been primed, it hasn't been inked. So you just this guy right here. What you want to do? You want to have this guy at a. I like to do it at a 45 degree angle. All the textbooks and stuff and the professionals they prefer like a 10 to 12 angle, but I don't know. I'm I like round numbers, 45 degrees. But yeah, anyway, you want you just want to have that edge, that little edge. You don't want to you don't want to go flat. Whatever you do, don't go flat like this. You want to have it at some kind of angle. But just leave a cleaner image. We're looking for a cleaner image. That's this whole thing. It's about cleanest image as possible. So anyway, you just I don't know, supposedly you're just supposed to do one stroke. Whoosh, but I do. I like do two or three, and you want to you want to create a certain amount of pressure because we're just we don't you know you don't want this guy to move while you're doing it. So you just I just do it a couple times. Maybe sometimes I do it three times. Actually, it depends on my mood. I'm kind of a moody person, and you know I don't know, I'm kind of sensitive too. So, but yeah, two or three times. Let's see what happens here. All right, see, look at that. Perfect, perfect damage. Seems to be working out all right. See, can you see that? There we go. All right, that's the flood stroke. Flood stroke, that's just to get this primed for some ink. So now, and then, well, actually, look at that. We could just put that right there. You don't want to lean that in the ground. You don't want that <laughs> bottom because there's a little bit of wetness on the bottom. You don't want that. You don't want that to collect. We're not live. We're not working in. Uh, we are not working in very clean conditions here. So you don't want to. Oh, see. Oh, that one. That one would be mine. Okay. There we go. See. That's what happens when you get too messy. Not paying attention. So. Yeah. It's just we just do the same thing. This is called the printing stroke. That was the flood stroke. This is the printing stroke. You know, I'm not really much for technical terms, but. I just want to, I don't know, just plop her down. And then what I do is I take my little, I just, I like to use the same tool I used earlier. And uh, I just take some of that excess ink from the squeegee, you know, just get that in there. And then what I do is I, there's always excess down here too. You just scoop that little guy up and you put some more here. You know, it's just management. Manage your materials as best as you can. Just, I don't know, you don't want to waste anything. It's just like before, except for this time we're going to print on a, on a t-shirt. So I just you want to make sure this guy doesn't move while you're doing it. So you got to just be nice and steady. Do it at a nice, nice little angle. And okay, there we go. See, look, look at all that stuff. We can use that ink a little later. Then just be very gentle when you lift this little guy up. Ah. Oh, see, except for my thumb and my dirty thumb, we got a that might be a little bit high, but we got a perfect little print. Then you just move on to your next one. And you don't want to. You don't want this to sit around too long. You want to keep on moving because if you let this sit for, I don't know, probably a couple minutes, depending on the heat, it could dry. The ink could dry in there, and then uh, and then you won't be able to smoosh any more ink through there. It'll be ruined. But we're just gonna we're gonna do this one just a little bit lower. Let's just do it right there. Okay. All right. So it's just after this, it just comes a little bit like reduction. I mean, it's not like mass reduction, but it's a little bit of the reduction. You just kind of do the same thing. You just. Get a little ink above there. See, and then again, we'll just we'll just add a touch more ink from here. Yeah, this guy, little guy, has lasted me a long time. I don't, I don't know. I don't do a whole lot of printing, but I have printed. I've probably printed about ten or ten or twenty different designs in my lifetime. I mean, it's not a lot. I mean, but I think I think that's a pretty fair amount. So you just just oh, do it at a nice little angle. A lot of pressure. Keep one hand on your little frame and you just like, oh, okay, yeah. And then I just do it like, I usually do it three times. I used to do it one time, but I find that I do it three times. I just, it uh, makes up for any mistakes I may have made in a screen by using uh, excessive force. Oh, but this is not excessive force. You want to be gentle here. You don't want to sm smooch any of that ink when you lift her up. Just nice and gentle. Look at that. Perfect. Totally perfect. This is like, oh man, it's like, it's like I know what I'm doing. It's very strange. This is our third and final shirt. And so, I don't know, hopefully, I might, uh, hopefully I've given you enough information where you could just go and buy this and do it. Oh, 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 perfect. Oh my goodness. I don't know, I don't know what's happening here. I'm not used to, I'm not used to such success. If this can be called a success. Once again, use some nice warm water. You could use cold. I like to use just a medium warm water. You just, just rinse her out. Careful there, salad. <laughs> you might get some ink on your buttons. You don't want to get any ink on your buttons. No ink on the buttons. 
stream of water uh, through those areas, the open areas, to make sure that you no know, ink dries in there. Then I flip her around and I just, you know, I just do a, I just try to do as good a job as possible. Get all the ink out of the, get all the ink out. You don't want no ink at all left over. What I do is I, I just uh, take a quick look through some light, make sure, okay, make sure that there's no ink left in the screen. See, that's just some little bit of debris. Yeah, okay, there we go. See, she's all done. That's great. So what do you do is you want to dry this in a horizontal position. Horizontal. We'll just so her. would you say that that's hamburger fold? Hamburger versus hot dog position? Hamburger versus hot dog. Um, well, I would say... Hamburger versus hot dog. Well, my inclination is to say hamburger. Hamburgers are flat. But a hot dog, I don't know. I'm going to say hamburger. I'll say hamburger, but usually you get a hot dog in a bun and it's laying horizontal. So I think you can have horizontal. You just want, you want to clean up your tools with some water too, because I'm, I'm not the cleanest person, but when I work on projects, I like to try to clean stuff clean. This is, uh, basically, this is uh, uh, Cooking Kitty version number three, episode number three. Um, Revision number three, whatever, I know, it's three. One, two, three. Cinco, or, uh, yeah, three of them. Three. We did a soap thing. I'm not going to be able to do that.